Rotaries greatly expand the capability of your laser by enabling you to engrave on cylindrical objects. In this video, we'll go through the process of configuring a rotary for your Galvo laser, cover the various options in the rotary marking window, and run through an example job. While G-Code and DSP lasers are also capable of using rotaries, this video is specifically for Galvo lasers. Before we begin, make sure your rotary is plugged into your laser and that the laser is powered on and connected to Lightburn. Then head up to the Laser Tool drop-down menu in the top toolbar and select Rotary Setup. This opens a dialog window where we'll input specific parameters for our rotary. Starting at the top with rotary type, we have chuck and roller. For Galvo lasers, a chuck is more common and what we're using in this video. While operation between the two is similar, clicking back and forth, we can see there are a couple of differences that we'll point out as we go through the settings. Whenever you plan on running a rotary job, enable rotary needs to be toggled on. If you find yourself jumping back and forth between rotary and non-rotary jobs often, you can add this option to the main laser window. To do so, click on the gear icon in the top toolbar to open the settings window. Then toggle on the show rotary enable on main window option. When rotary mode is enabled, there's a visual indicator in the bottom right of your workspace status bar. Reverse rotary direction flips the direction the rotary moves in. If output to your rotary is backwards or sliced in the wrong order, you can enable this option instead of adjusting the rotary's physical orientation. Return to starting point ensures that once a rotary job completes, the rotary will move your object back into its initial position. Next, we have split setup. When working with a rotary and Galvo laser, graphics are split into segments or slices. Each slice is marked on the object, then the rotary turns. The next slice is marked and so on until the entire graphic has been marked. The size of each segment is determined by the split size setting. If your object is tapered, irregularly shaped, or not perfectly aligned with the rotary axis, using a small split size can help reduce gaps or misalignment of the splits. A larger split size will reduce the time spent running the job, but it can be harder to dial in the settings such that there are no overlaps or gaps. To help eliminate visible gaps between slices, you can tell Lightburn to overlap them. We recommend sticking with the default values as a starting point and making slight adjustments as needed. Rotary Axis tells Lightburn the orientation in which your rotary is mounted. If your rotary is moving your object left and right or horizontally, then it's on the X axis. If it's rotating your object from front to back or vertically, then it's on the Y axis. When the rotary axis is X, you want to engrave along the Y axis using a scan angle of 90 or 270. And when the rotary axis is Y, you'll want to engrave along the X axis with a scan angle of 0 or 180. If your scan angle is incorrect for the rotary axis you've selected, Lightburn will give you a warning message. Under rotary settings, the steps per rotation value is the number of motor steps required to spin the rotary in one complete rotation. When the test button in the bottom left of the window is pressed, it should rotate 360 degrees, pause, and then rotate back to the starting point. Having an incorrect value here will result in warped or disconnected output. Most of the time, this value is provided by the laser manufacturer in a screenshot or text document. Enter the diameter of the object you'll be engraving in the object diameter field. For chuck rotaries, an accurate measurement is crucial, so we recommend using high precision calipers. This value must be updated anytime you place an object with a different diameter on the rotary to prevent warped or disconnected output. This is one key difference between chuck and roller rotary types. For rollers, the object diameter entered doesn't affect output in any way but roller rotaries have an extra setting for roller diameter. Entering a precise roller diameter is crucial. Usually, this value will be provided by your rotary's manufacturer. If your steps per rotation are correct, the roller, and not an object on the roller, will make one complete rotation when you click the test button. Object circumference is automatically calculated based on the value entered in the diameter field which is often useful when designing or laying out graphics. 
For full wrap designs, the combined height of your graphics should be identical to the circumference. Object diameter will also automatically change if you adjust circumference. The last section is for motor speed. Generally, the defaults here work well. However, if your rotary is slipping or losing steps, reducing the max speed and increasing acceleration time can help to prevent that. Once you have all your rotary settings configured, click OK to apply any changes and close the window. Here's a project I created for a tumbler engraving. I used the coded length of the tumbler and the circumference given in the rotary setup window to create my engravable area on a tool layer. This makes positioning graphics much easier and is extremely helpful when working with full wrap designs. Once you're happy with your design, press start in the laser window to open the rotary marking dialog window. Starting at the top left under setup, we have a few familiar settings. Split size, overlap, and object diameter are the same parameters we set a moment ago in the rotary setup window. Changing any of these values updates them in both places. They're included here to let you make edits if needed without having to jump back and forth. If you've set a split size that is lower than your rotary is capable of addressing, you'll see a warning message that will let you know the smallest valid split size for your rotary and the object you're engraving. If you need to make a different edit in the rotary setup window, the setup button at the bottom left pops open that window. Run whole shapes if possible tells Lightburn to create splits in such a way that shapes are not broken into segments. The rotary will jog to the center of each valid shape and mark it in its entirety. This can produce a higher quality finish without gaps or misalignment within shapes. When enabled, you can specify the max shape size you want this setting applied to. Any object larger than this size will be split into segments. Going with too big of a value here can lead to the laser's beam going out of focus while it marks the edges of a larger shape. This is caused by the curved surface of the object on your rotary and may result in lighter engraving or no marks at all. Run shapes in shape order runs all objects in their planned order, allowing the rotary to rewind. This option is best for multi-pass jobs and chuck rotaries. Run all shapes in each slice runs all passes in each slice before moving on to the next one. This option is best for roller style rotaries where objects may lose position due to rewinding. The output center represents the location in your laser's work area that all output will be centered on. By default, it's set to half the maximum length of your workspace meaning output defaults to the center of the laser's field. The text box lets you adjust this point if your rotary isn't perfectly centered in the field. Pressing the show button generates a framing line at the output center location, letting you quickly verify whether it's centered correctly on your rotary or needs to be shifted. On the right side of the window, we have our positioning. The value displayed next to position shows the current location of the rotary along the axis of rotation. Go to zero returns the rotary to the zero point on the axis of rotation. The jog directional buttons move the rotary forwards or backwards by the amount specified in the text box above the go to zero button. The set to zero button sets the current position of the rotary as the new zero point. It's important to note that regardless of where the zero point is set, Output will always be oriented relative to the current position of the rotary when you press start. In rotary mode, the center line of your Lightburn workspace represents the starting position of the rotary. If the rotary is set to the y-axis, it's represented by the horizontal center line. And if it's set to the x-axis, it's represented by the vertical center line. The rotary will turn in one direction to mark graphics above the center and in the other direction to mark graphics below. If you want your graphics perfectly centered at the current position of the rotary, center them in your Lightburn workspace so they're straddling the center line. If you want them to output only above or below the rotary's current position, position them so they are just above or below that center line. The frame button in this window frames your job one slice at a time. When pressed, a separate window pops up that lets you cycle forwards or backwards through each segment. This also displays the currently viewed segment along with the total number of them. Note that these slices are not the same as the slices of the actual job. 
as determined by your split size. Instead, Lightburn automatically creates just enough framing slices to accurately represent where on the object your project will output. Finally, at the very bottom center, we have Sanity Check. This very helpful feature checks to make sure that your settings make sense and will warn you if your scan angle is set to engrave along the dimension of rotation, or you've enabled run whole shapes if possible, but selected fill all shapes at once in the cut settings editor. You'll also automatically receive these warnings when the rotary marking window first opens, but you can use this as a check if you make any changes or skipped past the initial warning. Start, pause, and stop work the same way as they do in the laser window during flat marking operations. With the output center aligned correctly on our tumbler and our slices framed at our desired height, we're ready to press start and run our engraving. Now you know how to configure a rotary for your Galvo laser, ensure your design is positioned correctly on the workpiece, and make job-specific adjustments as needed. While there are more considerations when engraving with a rotary, using the information outlined in this video along with working through a few test pieces will have you up and running in no time. Be sure to like and subscribe for more great videos on Mastering Lightburn.